when we think about treatment modalities, typically uh, you start off with the least invasive and then you progress, um, but very often you need to use more than one strategy. So an individual, for example, who has spasticity of the uh, lower extremity, let's say specifically the calf muscles being overactive, you might start off with teaching them how to stretch that muscle out. And then you might use other modalities like botulinum toxin injections, so uh, injecting an agent that actually stops the communication between the nerve and the muscle temporarily so that that uh, reflex is uh, decreased. So an example I can think of is an individual that I treated. Uh, he had uh, recently acquired spinal cord injury, um, but he was actually doing uh, practicing walking uh, in his therapy during inpatient rehabilitation and he had fairly good strength of the lower extremities and fairly good balance, uh, but whatever he would progress to weight bearing on his feet, um, they would start fluttering up and down because of that clonus developing where the calf muscles would become overactivated and, and spasm. So we started a program of stretching. Uh, we used um, TENS, uh, transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulation, and we also injected botulinum uh, toxin into the calf muscles to help uh, decrease the intensity of those spasms. And he found that with a combination of those, they did actually settle over time and he was able to progress with practicing his walking. If it was first through uh, drug therapy, uh, baclofen, mm -hmm. we went through, as you recall, varied doses of baclofen, trying to find a solution that would work. The baclofen did tone it down mm -hmm. for me, but it didn't uh, actually create a functional response. I was still struggling in the parallel bars and just for standing function. And when we went to the Botox solution, mm -hmm. that's where I actually started seeing the results that I was able to stand for an extended mm -hmm. period of time and walk in the parallel bars. It is still a challenge, uh, a challenge when uh, turning, when trying to turn in the parallel bars. And uh, if I don't work to control it, mm -hmm. it can still generate just uh, issues in freestanding or uh, forward walking in the parallel bars. Uh, the best way to control it for me is through uh, applying weight. So if I load that right leg, uh, that's the way I can actually shut down the spasticity. And when I'm in a stepping position, uh, that's when I'm most at risk. When I'm de-weighting, mm -hmm. uh, the spasticity acts up and then I reload my leg uh, with the next stride and I can uh, either shut it down entirely or reduce it and mm -hmm. I can manage through it. If you're not comfortable with the medications for spasticity, then I would highly recommend uh, referring to a specialist in physical medicine and rehabilitation. Uh, these are uh, physicians who have trained in the field of the use of physical modalities and rehabilitation strategies to help individuals with either uh, congenital or acquired conditions uh, like spinal cord injury. Uh, and we're very familiar with the management of medications, both oral or injected uh, for spasticity management. And we can also help guide when and if a referral to a surgeon would be necessary for spasticity management as well. It's a long process to find your way through to the right solution and I'm sure the right solution will be different for each patient but my encouragement is that you have to go through the cycle of trying uh, each new therapy, determining whether or not it works and you'll land on something that will help.